So I started a totally different video today than what I'm about to show you, because what I'm about to show you cropped its ugly ass head in the middle of the other video I was trying to create. And I'm specifically talking about the Fizon controller and the Microsoft KB3878 and also the KB blah 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 preview update here, causing SSDs with Fizon controllers to potentially drop out during high data transfers uh, with the latest updates. Well, <clears throat> I'm experiencing the problem now in a way that is completely different than the way it was actually described and on drives using a different Fizon controller than what was initially reported. So what we can deduce so far before I demonstrate to you the problem, it's a wider spread problem than initially reported and it's happening in user, in, like user scenarios that are way different than what was reported. Today's video is brought to you by our brand new GPU Apocalypse 2.0 shirt, kind of immortalizing all of the stuff you love about today's GPUs. Our GPU Apocalypse 1.0 shirt was actually one of our most famous and popular shirts, and now it's re-immortalized with GPU 2.0. But well, let's face it, the Apocalypse never went anywhere, it just evolved. Just like this shirt. Go buy it now. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, it's worth going and watching our previous video, and I'll try and remember to link it down below. I really suck at that. But basically, we talked about Windows updates causing uh, Fizon based controlled SSDs, which span a range of manufacturers, to basically, under certain use cases, drop off and disappear uh, from Windows. And then that would cause a blue screen, and then a restart would either bring the drive back to life, or in a handful of cases, not. Usually the drive would come back after a restart. But the initial reports were stating that it was the Fizon, uh, like the E12 uh, control base controller. So like the PS5012-E12 controller. And then actually later reported with the E18 and the E21T controllers. I am on the T500 Crucial Drive, which is running specifically the Fizon p 5025 e E25 controller, which is newer than all of those, and I'm now experiencing a problem, but it's completely different than the way these others were reported. So in the testing that Tom's Hardware talked about and a few of the other independent testers sort of kind of were showing their data, was that various drives that are using those controllers, and we'll put the list on the screen right here, including um, you know, the E25, which is only a handful of drives actually. The E25 being so much newer of a Fizon controller is not being used in nearly as many drives. Like it's the Crucial T500. I have a two terabyte variant in this system right here. Anyway, the Micron 3500, which is the SI slash OEM version of the T500 because Micron uh, owns Crucial. Uh, and then the Sabrent Rocket 5 and then the PNY Accelerate CS3150 are the ones we found so far using the E25 controller. But that's not a full extensive list. There could be more that we're not aware of, but that's what we just found on a quick high level dig. But as you can see by the on-screen graph right here, or graphic, there is a lot of drives that are using a Fizon controller ranging from the E12 to the E25. Uh, and I don't know if any E26s are gonna pop up on the problem list, but anyway. What you see right here is my lovely BIOS. And what you'll see right now, this was an, this was an auto restart after a blue screen I experienced when attempting to do some driver testing. Uh, with my 5090 and trying to see how driver performance has changed since the 5090 first launched. Has it gotten better? Has it gotten worse? Has performance gone up? Has it gone down? And obviously this is my GPU test bench. But if I come over here to boot, you can see there's no drives listed. They, if there were any drives listed, they'd be under the boot option priorities. Any bootable USB or any uh, uh, bootloader for Windows on the, found on the drives would be listed there. Right now this shows there are no drives installed in the system simply because of the fact that I only have one drive. And like I said, the problem is now easily recreatable for me. I found a use case scenario that I can just guarantee recreate this problem. That's what I'm gonna show you. And the reason why I'm gonna show you this today is the problem, the problem doesn't present itself in ways that you would expect. The initial reports were saying that, you know, moving large files, like say 50 gigabytes or bigger on a Fizon based drive that was about 60% full would cause the drive to disappear from, from the Windows. And of course, if the Windows drive disappears, then memory only has a, some of that data left and then it, it will blue screen and then automatically restart. The problem with this is that's not what I was doing. Now I've tested that over here, just in a couple of different scenarios, uh, just using Crystal Disk Mark. I've tried 3D Mark uh, storage test. I've also tried IO meter. I cannot get the drive to do what I'm about to show you with any of those methods of moving large file sets. It's a very different scenario. But let me show you right now. Like I'm in the BIOS. If I just say ch save changes and exit, there's no changes. You can see the system restarts itself but the drive is not gonna come back. 
because the first thing I noticed here is the only way to get the drive back is to do a full power cycle. That means obviously the voltage uh, needs to be severed to the controller so that the controller can like go into this full restart state. I don't know if it's because the firmware craps out and until you do a full restart, the firmware isn't really reloaded into the EEPROM. So I'm assuming that's probably what's happening here, but right, so there's that. But now if I power cycle, even for just a second, right, then what'll happen is I can get the drive to appear back into, uh, into the BIOS and then the BIOS obviously can see the bootloader and load up Windows. So it needs a full power cycle. Now here's the thing that Phil and I were kind of talking about prior to this video is some motherboards, when there's a blue screen, will kind of do like a full shutdown and then a restart like I just did. The Tai Chi board, which I have on here, does not do a full power cycle. It just does a soft restart where it basically just goes through post again, but it doesn't shut down the power supply and turn the power supply back on. Uh, Asus motherboards tend to do that. Turn off the motherboard and turn itself back on. Uh, MSI boards are kind of hit and miss. As you can see, it's all working now, right? So Phil was basically saying, oh, that I would, he was saying he would have preferred the method of like, Turn, let it turn itself off and turn itself back on because then the, the windows would be right back up and running. But I immediately fired back with, had it done that, I would not even think to check the SSD because I would have never been given the clue that it's disappearing. I would have thought it was maybe something GPU related because I am in the middle of testing drivers. So I probably would have started going through all of the, tr the troubleshooting of DDUing drivers, rolling back, back drivers, and continue to see this problem persist because I'm in the middle of our testing, that, our, our testing uh, standard operating procedures, which are very locked down. Fortunately, because they're so locked down and it's happening within this test scenario, it's very recreatable. So that's, the, that's kind of the problem with this right now is I've been getting a lot of emails from folks saying, man, I'm getting blue screens, I've done DDU, I've done, I've uninstalled stuff and they're like, I'll take my graphics card and put it in my friend's system and it's running fine, but I go back into my system, I'm getting blue screens and playing games. And of course they think it's something related to maybe an overclock or a driver or something like that. Never once would I have even thought until today that it could be the Fizon drive controller problem. So let me go ahead and demonstrate for you how this is presenting for us. No pun intended, I use Intel Presentmon because this is the, <laughs> imagine it presents the SSD failure in Presentmon. Anyway, for me, I never got any farther than F1 2024, which is the first actual game we test outside of the synthetic benchmarks of like 3D Mark stuff. And I was spending more than an hour trying to get through our, the, the, just the few resolution that we would have 4K, 1440p, 1080p, because I kept getting blue, blue screen restart until I realized like, why is my drive not coming back online? That's when I went, holy shit. it's actually the Fizon problem. Then I did some research of the drive that's in here, which is the T500 and realized it's on the E25 controller, which is not even the same controller even talked about in Tom's hardware or WCCF tech or even us, cause we sort of reported on their reportings. We didn't have firsthand experience yet. And I guess this is perfect because a lot of people in our video were like, oh, you're just regurgitating a problem. You didn't do any testing on your own. Well, here you go. Okay, hope you're happy. No, you're not happy. You're a miserable person, so you're not gonna be happy, but that's okay. All right, so Presentmon is up. We can go in here to benchmark mode and run benchmark test. And what you'll see is I can get through a couple of these benchmarks, but then what will happen usually on the third one is what was initially just a quick blue screen turned into a quick decay <laughs> of stability. Oh, it's gonna totally make me a liar and not do it in this run. I will do it until it does it. Oh, it's another thing where it's taking too long again. Yeah, it should have loaded already. See, we're stuck. Present one's looking weird. Yeah, there it goes. An error reading data. Verify the integrity of the game. There it goes. <laughs> it was a slow crash. It wasn't like a hard drive disappeared. It's like the drive started like disappearing. So what you'll see now is we'll be right back where we started this video where the drive won't be there. It'll be go right to BIOS because there's no, there's no bootloader because the drive, the, the controller is offline. But that's the first time it ever recovered enough to where Windows was like, hey, there's something wrong with the data. <laughs> and then it's like when you get unplugged from the matrix. Yeah. Just when you pull it out without actually dialing your way out. Not like this. Yeah. So the only way to get it back now is to power cycle the, the PSU. Now, the, the update is installed. I verified that the update is installed because I 
when we did all the update stuff, we talked about this initially. We made sure, I made sure that like this system over here was good because we tested it on there. Although it reinstalled over there too because we didn't pause updates for five weeks. Nor did we do what we suggested, which is like, hey, you should probably go in there and uh, disable updates and or even use like arrow tweaker, win arrow tweaker to disable them even further. I'm kind of glad I didn't though because I wouldn't have discovered this. So here's the thing. Right now, I have to uninstall the update because of the fact that it's clearly blocking me from doing the other video and that still needs to be done. So I am going to go ahead and just go into Windows updates. Uh, we already showed this, go into Windows, go into updates, go into installed updates, and then find the update that we don't want, which is 3878, and then uninstall that update and then pause updates. Yeah, so it's the next day. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't gotten very much farther than what I said. So this is the T500 drive that was in there. We showed you that it was affected by the 3878 uh Security up, security update. We'll talk about why I'm doing air quotes in a second. Uh, we had actually closed out that video, finished it, rendered it, uploaded it, hadn't put it live yet because we had other videos that were going live first, and then proceeded to continue to try and move forward with the testing today, which we were blocked on doing until we realized even after uninstalling the 3878 security update, there's also the KB blah, 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 3878 accumulative update or cumulative update, which you cannot uninstall because it's a feature install. So you can't actually roll that back. You can roll back the security portion of it, but not the whole thing. So our problem persisted even after uninstalling the problematic update. So this test bench was completely like, a complete showstopper on moving forward with the other video I was trying to do about the NVIDIA drivers over time and how have they aged for the 50 series GPUs. And so Phil and I today were like, well, shoot, what are we gonna do? So what we decided to do was switch over to a different drive. We actually put a crucial P5 drive in here, um, a two terabyte drive, which is not running the Fizon controller. Now here's here's the, here's the problem, um, is not all crucial drives run Fizon, like, and, and that's probably true for a lot of the other brands as well. So you're really going to have to do some legwork and cross-reference whether or not your drive has the FISA, any of the Fizon controllers. We talked about E12's affected, E18's affected, E15, if it's on there, it's probably affected too, E21, E25, and I bet you anything E26 might also be affected in there in some way. <sighs> Moving on, the, the, the Crucial P5 Plus drive, or the P5P drive that's in here is working fine now. So all we did was take the original drive, use Clonezilla, which is a free utility, to be able to just copy the drive off of here over to there. So everything is exactly the same. The cumulative update is still, it's still installed. The 3878 security update is uninstalled and it works fine. So we are 1000% positive now that the drive, the experience that we were just showing you on this drive is absolutely related to the uh, 3878 breaking SSDs. Now here's the biggest thing that's changed since the initial video is only Fizon was really kind of covered in the beginning, but it is affecting like four different controller manufacturers now, not just Fizon. Fizon is just the only brand that's really acknowledged it. Guess who still hasn't really acknowledged it? Microsoft. So I have a couple recommendations here for you because let's say this was my gaming system. Let's say it was my sim rig and I want to play F1 and it would just keep crashing and crashing and crashing. There is literally no workaround right now, none to make this drive with that problem baked into Windows with that title. Who knows what other titles are broken? That's just the one that we got stopped at, which was the first gaming title. There was no workaround for that at all, other than Fortunately for us, because we are a computer building channel, walk over to our, you know, we have like 300 SSDs over there and grab a drive that's not affected, which we found the P5 Plus not having an affected, uh, like the brand of the controller is not on any of the list and just tested it and it works fine now. So my recommendation to you is if you have a system that you're like, shoot, I absolutely positively cannot have this system down, your only workaround right now might be to actually go out and buy another drive and clone your OS over to it. For if, if you, even if you're not gonna run it as a daily, which if you're gonna go through the efforts to clone it, I don't know why you wouldn't, but if nothing more than to have a backup of your system exactly as it sits today. But Microsoft really needs to address this and sooner rather than later, because I have a feeling based on the emails that I've been getting, this is a much bigger problem affecting people in many different ways, not just the whole idea of it being a major transfer. Because what's funny is even Fizon said, 
we can't really recreate the problem. We know it exists. We know users are creating it. But if they're trying to, if the initial reports were like, oh, moving 50 gigabytes on a drive that's 60% full or more kind of triggers the problem, we couldn't trigger that problem. We were 50% full, but we still couldn't trigger that problem until the most random way of trying to play F1's benchmark. So it's probably gonna show its ugly head in many different ways. So not exactly the way we wanted to spend the last two days with this sanity checking and testing and verifying and now getting it to, to work. But the only work was to switch the drive to a non to a drive that is not on the affected controller list, which is bigger than Fizon now, which is what I said was probably going to happen last week when we initially talked about this. All right, now we can end this video and move forward because now we're finally unblocked. So we, we can now continue our testing, which I was hoping would have been done by now because this is a holiday weekend and we would like to actually enjoy some time off. So, all right, there you go. I'm not holding my breath that Microsoft's gonna respond anytime soon or get this figured out. This is a pretty complicated problem. I guess we just gotta figure out what is happening within Windows and why is it making the controller turn off, which is essentially what's happening.